record, uh, the chair would like to acknowledge the presence of Senator Cynthia Villar. Today, we have a guest list, which we would like to, one second. which you would like to acknowledge also, uh, from the National Telecommunications Commission, uh, Chairman Gamaliel Cordoba. We are expecting uh, resource persons to represent uh, the, the Securities and Exchange Commission, the National Electrification Administration, and the Energy Regulatory Commission. They are not yet here. No, I think Ms. Grace Santos just arrived from the ERC. The following uh, franchises, which are all up for renewal, no? Walang brand new franchise dito. These are all existing franchises. You are in operation and you're asking for an extension. How many years extension? What, two years, three years? You know? <laughs> all right. Uh, we'd like to acknowledge the presence of the representatives of Tarlac Electric, Mr. Vivencio Romero, Jr. Attorney Rani Ocampo and Ms. Flor del Floriza Forlales. Uh, from Mactana Electric, Mr. Douglas Luim and Mr. Gilbert Pagobo. For wireless telcos, we have Contel Communications, Mr. Raul and Anthony Concepcion and Ms. Bessie Lateo. Radio Television Broadcast. We have Mr. from Radio Mindanao Network. We have Mr. Eric Canoy, Mr. Jaime Puno, and Ms. Marietta Nieto. For the firm known as Interactive Broadcast Media, we have Mr. Jaime Puno. Is Mr. Jaime Puno here? Will you use the mic, please, because I I'm with RM, and I think that is a mistake. No, no, let's get this straight. Uh, interactive Broadcast Media. I represent that, uh, Your Honor. Why do the Puno, uh, why do the Kanois have two? Even one is enough. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, for Alu Broadcasting, Ms. Josephine Reyes. Attorney Socrates Arevalo and the world famous Ray Langit. Well, <laughs> okay. Uh, representing representing Christian Era Broadcasting, Mr. Romel San Victores. Mr. Zeromsky Pineda. Mr. Amil June Flores. And for Eagle Broadcasting, is Eagle Broadcasting here, Mr. Jorge Cabacugun, Cabacugan, Mr. Citadine, um, no, Attorney Citadine Sarate, and Attorney Elmer Galicia. Good morning. Everybody here, let's go one by one. What we'd like you to do is just give us a short introduction what you're doing, how long you've been in existence, what type of programs uh, you uh, promote or produce, and uh, why Congress should consider an extension of two years, five years, ten years. Alam mo, we're not stuck with 25 years. Ha? Pag medyo malabo ang presentation ninyo, baka two years lang. Okay? Uh, and... Uh, We'll do it in a particular order so that uh, you would all be prepared. Now, let's uh, begin with electricity. Get electricity out of the way. Tarlac Enterprises is Mr. Uh, Romero, yes. who will be speaking for Tarlac Enterprises. Uh, 
Good morning, Your Honors. Uh, Talak Electric, uh, formerly Talak Enterprises, Inc. Uh, We'd like to request that you speak into the mic so that we may pick okay. up your... Yeah. Uh, Tarlac Electric, uh, formerly Tarlac Enterprises, Inc., was established in uh, 1963. But before that, it was it was uh, solely owned by my grandfather. Uh, he bought the franchise from Vivalco in 1949. Uh, from from uh, utility with a load of 20 megawatts and 20,000 customers when the franchise was granted in 1990. Go ahead. Uh, we've grown to to a load of about 55 megawatts and 70,000 customers in 2014. Uh, one of the conditions of, of our 1992 franchise was the electrification of all barangays within five years, which we are happy to to inform uh, the committee that we've uh, fully energized all barangays within our franchise area five years after we were granted the franchise in 1992. Uh, and uh, we'd like to... Uh, okay, let me just ask you a little question there. When you say you energized all barangays, does, me, does that mean you have energized every sitio in that barangay? Yes, Your Honor. Does that mean you energized every house in the sitio? There are a number of houses. Which yes or no? No. No. Okay. What would be the percentage, based on households, uh, what would be the percentage of uh, electrification or energy station? More than 99%, Your Honor. Okay, that's good. What's the uh, total population, household population in your uh, we have about area? We have about 68,000 residential consumers. And the You're household is... So you have 68 thousand accounts yes residential accounts residential how many commercial how many industrial uh, about uh, two thousand uh, uh, commercial and the uh, and the uh, about a hundred industrial so the most industrialized or commercial part of your franchise area would be Tarlac City yes your honor we serve only the city Tarlac City the rest of the province uh, hang is Tarlac City, Tarlac lang city po, lang po. Okay. Who, who serves the rest of the province? Cooperative? Yes, uh, the northern and western portion are served by Tavelco 1, and the southern and eastern portion by Tavelco 2. Okay. Now, from whom do you source your power? Uh, right now, we source our power from GN Power, a uh, coal plant. Uh, uh, situated in uh, Bataan, and we have. Uh, yeah, but that plant doesn't always operate. Well, Mr. it's Rani Ocampo there will tell you that that plant is three months on and three months off, and three months on and three months off. It's got a terrible problem. The the, the past, <coughs> Your Honor, since since March, it has been operating quite well, with very minimal downtime. Okay. Secondly. I understand that the type of contracts they sign up is they don't need to give you substitute power. Nor, yeah. Normally, when you sign up for a power contract, meron hong kalutilya doon. Okay, pag hindi ako makakadeliver nito, bibili ako sa OSM at papadala ko siyo. Yeah. Do you have that type of arrangement in your contract? Yes. Meron? Yeah. We, uh, this so, was, GM will... Yes. They source the Bully. power from, for us, but at, at the cost that they, they acquired the power for. Yeah. yeah. So they just pass on the uh, generation charge to you. Yes. Between you and me, what do you charge for uh, distribution wheeling fees? For residential, uh, our generation charge for, uh, for August was about 478. 478 per kilowatt hour. Bakit ang taas-taas dito yung Meralco? Actually, actually, mas mababa po ang Meralco since last month sa amin. Ah, talaga? Apo. And okay. much lower this month kasi malaki po yung binaba niya. 
Okay, for a typical, say, household that consumes 200 kilowatt hours of electricity a month, what would his bill come to? What would be his average? Uh, Almost rate? 10 pesos. 10 pesos? Yes. Okay. So the 10 pesos, let's say 478 comes from generation, how much do you charge for distribution for, wheeling fees? For distribution, about 180. And uh, naman, ha? Okay. Ano Pinapupo ng ERC. Where's ERC? Yes, Grace. You're gonna be in the spot today, Grace. <laughs> All right. So you charge one, how much? One, About 180. 180. Then how much is paid for to uh, NGCP for the transmission wheeling fees? Uh, about 80 centavos. 80, 85. So that brings us to... Seven forty-three. What? Now, what's the rest? Universal the charge, gram. Taxes, uh, franchise tax, universal charge. Franchise one. tax comes to how much? One half of one percent. Give me a round number so that. Uh, about seven, seven, eight centavos. Okay, go ahead. And then universal charge is. Uh, uh, Around 20 centavos. You know, the UC is only 20 now? 20. And then 4 centavos for, for the, uh, you know, uh, for feet. 4? Feet. 4 centavos for feet. Yeah, that's yeah. going up. Yeah. What about gram? Is there a? None. None. Well, I only make out 743, 750, 774. Uh, systems loss. Systems loss is about uh, 70. 70 centavos systems loss. How many percent is that? Uh, our systems loss right now is, is about 7. But uh, the systems loss charge for, for residential is higher because delivery at residential is at a lower voltage. For industrial, it's the system loss charge is lower because the delivery is at a higher voltage. Therefore, yeah. the system loss there is lower. So when you average both out, what would your system's loss be? 70, uh, 70 centavos per kilowatt hour? Yeah. All right, go on. So I'm, I'm, I'm now at 8.44. Apo. Vat, Apo. Vat, yeah. My good friend, Vat. What would that amount to? One peso? More. More huh? than one peso. Why? 12 percent. Okay, so about 120? Yeah. Nine, 964. 964. Wala na. Ay, wala na what about your CSR? The... Uh, the, the, the percentage that you're supposed to share with local communities. They don't charge you for that. No. That's for, I think, Your Honor, that's for generation. Generation, yeah. yeah. So they don't charge. All right, good. Um, so you're now requesting an extension of your franchise by 25 years. Yes, Your Honor. Very well. I, I think uh, looking through your documents, everything so, seems to be in order. You pay your taxes, no? Yes. Yes. You don't yes, receive sure. letters from Kim and Ares? No. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> that is the one letter everybody fears in this country. Very good. Thank you very much. Uh, Thank you, Your Honor. Good luck, Electric. Now let's go to Mactan. We'd like to put in a good word for 
Pista Land, who has a development in Tarlac City. If you can give them a 25% discount on, on your wheeling fees. But it would attract more buyers, Diva, when, when you tell them that they get the special electric rate. All right, who would like to make the presentation for uh, Mactan Electric? Would that be you, Mr. Luhim, or Mr. Bagobo? All right, Mr. Bagobo, you have the floor. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning. Uh, Mactan Electric, uh, also known as uh, Mekopo, uh, is uh, currently uh, uh, serving uh, the city of Lapu-Lapu and the municipality of Cordoba. And, uh, we, uh, our customer base as of now is uh, about uh, 85,000 uh, 80, uh, 85, customers. Uh, we are sourcing our uh, power from uh, three uh, major suppliers, namely... Break that down for me first. Uh, how many, w that would be residential, how many accounts would be commercial, how many accounts would be industrial? In Tadlak, you had 80,000 customers, no? 70. 70. And would you like to break that down also for the committee? How many uh, it's, residential? It's 68,000 uh, residential, 2,000 commercial, and uh, about 100 uh, industrial. What is the largest industrial? Uh, <coughs> Yes, all right. Um. Our, our largest uh, uh, industrial customer is a semiconductor firm. Um, As uh, on uh, how many? Uh, our largest uh, uh, customer is a semiconductor firm on, on electronics, ON, uh, with a load of about 5 megawatts. Okay, that's their peak demand, no? Yeah. All right. But... Uh, you have 55,000 customers. How many are residential? How many are industrial? And how many are commercial? Uh, we have 70,000 customers. 68,000 are residential, 2,000 are commercial. And uh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I was ta yeah. talking to Mr. Bagobo. Thank you for that. Uh, Your Honor, the breakdown of our uh, customers are as follows. Uh, for the residential, we have about 76,000. Uh, 76,062 for the uh, government about uh, 3,085 which that's for the government government uh, government customers oh, government okay uh, for our commercial we have uh, 681 and for our uh, heavy industrial is we have nine po. what was the government's number uh, 3,085 po. How much do you charge for? What's your average generation cost? Our total uh, total average rate for, uh, for uh, as of June is 8.59 po. Yan total, yan. I will break yeah. it down, Your Honor. Yeah. Uh, the uh, breakdown of that po is uh, yung generation is uh, 5.11. The transmission is five uh, point two eight seven. 
Transmission is 5.287. Uh, uh, 0.28 lang po. 0.287. Yes. The systems loss charge is 0 0.69. The what? Uh, systems loss charge, 0.6. Now, first give me your uh, distribution willing. Uh, yung distribution willing po is uh, 0 0.829. All right. Then your system's loss would be? Uh, 0.69 po. That's pretty good. And uh, your f of course, you pay the fit. Universal charge. Uh, universal charge po, uh, point nine, uh, point nine, uh, point 0.1938 for the NPC stranded cost. For missionary electrification is point one five six one uh, for environmental charge is point zero zero two five uh, for fit po is uh, point zero four zero six po franchise our franchise is uh, it's uh, point zero zero seven uh, point zero zero seven five or seventy five percent of the subtotal ng ano po Franchise uh, is what? Point zero point zero zero seven five. No, that's too low. Of this, of the uh, subtotal po ng ano? Uh, uh, ng, give me a breakdown of, uh, of that uh, uh, after the hearing, no? Uh, opo. Z zero zero is too low. It's probably just one zero. Uh, dalawa po yung zero na sa uh, bill ko po. But it's it's a dun dun sa naka subtotal po kasi. I'll, I'll present it to you la later po. So overall, the customer there pays eight fifty nine. Opo. Where do you source your power? Uh, we have three major sources. Opo. Oh, that's the uh, George T. Opo. Uh, third po is uh, Pisam. We still have a contract with Pisam po. Your probably power sectors your, asset. Probably uh, from uh, later geothermal. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Uh, and uh, our imbalances is being sourced from the market. The Cebuano, the Bisayan Western. Ah, that's correct, sir. All right. How many percent the, uh, is sourced from Western? Uh, it's about seven percent, pa. Seven. Uh, yes, sir. Now, Cebu has been in ILP for the longest time, no? since the year 2000, the Interruptible Load Program. Yes, sir. Is that implemented in Mactan Electric Franchise Area or only in Beko? Uh, it's only in Beko po because none of our uh, customers actually participated on the uh, ILP. Why? Uh, there was no need for it? Yes, sir. So, Mactan does not have a shortage? Uh, in effect, wala po kasi fully contracted po yung demand natin. Again? Uh, in effect, wala po kasi fully contracted po yung demand. Hindi pa fully contracted yung demand. In yeah. other words, you have an fully overhang? Ah. Uh, fully. Okay. So, you're in a better situation there than the main island. Uh, ganun po yung ano. Ganun po yung uh, sitwasyon. Yes. Okay. How long have, has Mactan Electric been in operation? Uh, MECO uh, we, uh, has been uh, operating since 1960, 1964. Po. Uh, it was at that time Open Electric and uh, it was incorporated as Mactan Electric uh, 1967. So this would be your second extension? Yes, sir. Okay. The principal owners are the gentleman seated beside you and Yossi, Yossi Tanko. Papa. All right. Yeah. And uh, who else is a substantial shareholder in Mactan aside from any foreigners? Uh, uh, the other. Uh, Shareholder, major shareholder of Macopos, SPC, yung Salcon Power Corporation. SPC, Salcon Power Corporation. Po. Salcon. Apo. Okay, sila Dennis. Apo. All right. Um, I think that's all the information we need to elicit. Thank you very much for coming, and we'll let you know.
when we prepare the committee report. Uh, Chair would like to acknowledge the presence of the Senate President, uh, Senator Franklin Delon. Now let's go to Contel. Where's Contel? Yeah. Would you like to explain uh, what Contel is all about? Uh, good morning, Your Honors. Uh, Contel Communications is a wholly owned subsidiary of Concepcion Industries. Uh, we've been in business for 25 years. We provide a trunk radio service, which is a niche uh, communications uh, solution that cellular uh, cannot offer, which is basically dispatch communications, instant communications, and group call. Um, just to give you an idea of uh, the importance of, uh, of, of our service, um, the APEC, as you know, um, which we have this year, uh, Contel is providing the communication system for all of the uh, security and communication needs for the uh, APEC organizing committee. Um, so that is the type of service that Contel provides and also the, um, I, I suppose, the reputation that Contel has uh, built over the years in terms of providing a, uh, a reliable communications uh, s a solution to our customers. Your Honor. All right, you've had this uh, for 25 years now? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Sorry. And uh, you're asking for a 25-year extension now. In what way, if, if you do in any way, in what way do you compete with the normal telco providers like PLDT, Globe, Smart? Are you uh, in, in direct competition with them, or is uh, yours a particular niche in the telecommunications industry? Uh, Your Honor, we serve a niche. In fact, we don't compete with them, but we actually uh, complement them. In fact, some of um, our telecom, um, uh, they, they, we actually provide a service for them. So we serve a, a, a sort of backup uh, communication system for them as an alternative. Um, for cellular, um, we provide a unique service um, because cellular, you have to talk one-to-one, -one, whereas uh, radio communications, you can talk to a group simultaneously. Uh, if people need uh, instant communications in less than a second, uh, we, we are there to provide. So we are a niche service. Uh, we, our, our customers are typically uh, transportation, like the LRT. Um, as we mentioned, security, such as APEC, um, electricity providers as well. In fact, some of uh, the members here today are our customers, Radio Bindanao Network and uh, Mr. Ray Langit as well. So, so we, we complement. Who are your customers here? Um, Yes, Alil Broadcasting uh, is a customer, uh, Mr. Langit, and also Radio Mindanao uh, is also a customer as well. They use it for broadcasting, live reporting as well. I see. So those, these are for the field reporters. Who would like to talk for Alil? Mr. Langit? Totoo ba yun? Maganda ba yung service nila? Yes, uh, Your Honor. Okay. And uh, you would... You're using that instead of using the, the standard or the normal uh, cellular phone. Yeah, yes, uh, that upgrades our you know, equipment and uh, we need more quality sound on the air, Your Honor. I see. There's better quality with, through Contel, huh? Uh, yes, sir, because we, uh, yes, Your Honor, sorry, because um, our radios are, well, bigger than the cellular phone and the audio, we have a louder speaker, so, so it's perfect for, um, it's almost like a loudspeaker. No? So it's good for uh, radio reporting, yes. All right, so, so how come Radio Mindanao is not using Condell? Uh, they used to be a former subs uh, subscriber, I believe. Nagalit. Um, so what do they use now? What do you use now? Cellular phone. Uh, would you speak into the mic, please? Good morning, Your Honor. So we used to be a customer also of Contel. We'll probably revisit again the contracts we have with them uh, as a backup support for what the reporters also currently use now, which are cellular phones, Your Honor. Yes, plain cellular phones, huh? Yes. But there's advantage to so using also the trunk radio service that Contel provides. Yeah. The trunking radio, you can speak to many at the, at the same time. And you can choose your groups, diba? Yes, Your Honor. You have, you, have, uh, you have different channels. So it could be security, it could be uh, is that why, management. Is that why DeWiz has better signals than RMN? <laughs> yes. Your Honor, but we're also part of the request. Uh, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, Senator Rilon. Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, I'm, just, I'm just curious. Um, the uh, issue that, I mean, the franchise that we're discussing, it would appear that the, uh, uh, the the title of the measure says, an act renewing the franchise of Contel Communications, Inc. 
assignee of the grantee under Republic Act number 3932. Can you explain what this exactly means? Are you an assignee? Or are you are not an original of, uh, grantee? Are you an assignee? Sorry. Your Honor, um, Concepcion Industries um, was originally granted the franchise in 1992. Mm -hmm. And um, Concepcion, in, in the original franchise, um, um, Contel could use the franchise as provided that it, it is a wholly owned subsidiary of uh, Concepcion Industries. So Contel Communications is 100% owned by uh, Concepcion Industries. And so in this renewal, um, instead of the uh, franchise being under Concepcion Industries, we had um, re uh, requested that it be transferred to uh, Contel Communications instead, which still remains to be a wholly owned subsidiary of Concepcion Industries, Your Honor. So the franchise holder now will be Contel? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, this is a renewal? This is a renewal, Your Honor, the yes. The present uh, franchise holder is Concepcion Industries? Yes, Your Honor. I see. And uh, now you're transferring it to Contel, which is a wholly owned subsidiary? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Chief. Thank you. Um, we have uh, an additional, or two, two additional uh, resource persons here, Mr. Uh, Edgardo Cabarios of uh, the NTC and uh, Mr. Alvin, I, I'm sorry because it's so glary, I, I can't really read your nameplate, Mr. Alvin Blanco. Of, uh, also of the NTC. We still do not have anyone here from the NEA and the SEC. So, um, having heard Mr. Cabarios, Mr. Cordoba, uh, the uh, responses of Tarlac Electric and Mactan Electric, would you have any comments you would like to introduce? Your Honor, with regard to uh, Tarlac po and Mactan, uh, uh, Your Honor, uh, we don't have any jurisdiction with regard to uh, Tarlac and uh, Mactan uh, electric uh, companies. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm, yeah. I'm mixing up. Uh, it's the e it's ERC. So what about Contel? Um, Your Honor, we support the um, renewal of the franchise of Contel. Uh, they have been very helpful in uh, some activities where cellular phones were not uh, sufficient, like, for example, during the people visit and uh, during the um, uh, activities in the, um, uh, for, for uh, APEC, for the preparations of APEC, it's being used by the PSG and uh, also by other um, 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 armed forces groups uh, during these big activities. So uh, they are an alternative to... Uh, uh, cellular communications and um, it's it's also being used for um, disaster mitigation and uh, response by by different government were offices. You, were, were, were they deployed during Yolanda? Um, did you have uh, signal towers around later? Uh, no, not in later, uh, Your Honor. We, we did not have. But in the Manila, of course, um, some of the coordination, we provided communications in Metro Manila, but not in... Um, uh, specifically, the DOH, uh, we provide co uh, communications, but um, yeah, not in. Uh, so, where do you, what is the extent of your coverage now? Uh, your Honor, we cover from um, Baguio now all the way down to uh, Batangas and, and Cebu. So, that is the existing coverage at this point in time. However, we are investing also in a digital system, and um, that is also why we're asking for, uh, well, a, a request for the uh, renewal of the franchise because we're investing in digital. And our coverage as well uh, would expand with, with that system, Your Honor. All right. So let's go uh, and Before check. Before we leave that, um, shouldn't the franchise now be given directly to Contel instead of the conception and then assigned to Contel? Is there any uh, implication there? Um, Your Honor, that is the request now for Contel to have the uh, franchise directly. And, to uh, have the franchise directly, no yes, longer as a renewal, not as a renewal of the Concepcion franchise, because the that, way it true, is, yes. because the way the title, of Mr. Chairman, uh, is crafted, uh, uh, it says assignee 
of the grantee and the Republic Act, so and so. This is the uh, franchise of Concepcion. Is that correct? Uh, yes, Your Honor. And uh, so uh, that's why I'm asking: Why do? Why is it a? Why don't we just grant the franchise directly to Comtel? Is there any commercial? Is there any uh, legal implication? I don't see any legal implication. If it's a franchise granted directly to Comtel, unless uh, there are there are commercial reasons why you're doing this. Um, Your Honor, no commercial reasons. Uh, we don't have any commercial reasons. Is it, it more proper to grant the franchise directly to Comtel? Um, yes, I, I would uh, suppose so, Your Honor. Not um, a renewal, but an original franchise. Um, because the original yes, franchisee yes. is Concepcion yes, Industries. Yes, understand, Your Honor. Right? Yes, yes. As a lawyer, the original, uh, as a, as a, uh, the original grantee is Concepcion. Yes, sir. You're, you're correct, Your Honor. But you're you're renewing the 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 grant now in the name of Contel, is the way it is phrased yes, here. Correct. Is that correct? Um, yes, Your Honor. Um, I'm not a lawyer, but um, no. you, but you're correct. Whatever. Your yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, so I'm just asking the technical staff whether uh, it is more correct now just to grant it directly to Contel. Yes. Uh, unfortunately, our legal um, no. is, is right, not correct. Is there any commercial? Um, no, no, Your Honor. There, there's no, uh, there's no issue there's with regards no issue. to commercial. Yes. So we can do the, the, the we, we can grant the franchise directly to Contel. Uh, yes, Your and Honor. Contel, Actually, Contel is not the franchise holder. Yes, yes, Your Honor. That that would be okay. That would be good for us. That would be acceptable. Yes, Your Honor. Well, I'm submitting that to the chairman. For um, it's noted, uh, Mr. President. The uh, title of the House bill that was sent to the Senate is an act renewing the franchise of Contel Communications, Inc., as an E of the grantee under Republic Act. So uh, there would be some confusion as to whether the franchise is, belongs to Contel or to Concepcion. We can renew the Concepcion. I think the um, the issue eventually is the uh, because we're mandated to go uh, public um, within five years. So sorry, I, I think um, uh, if if there would if, if uh, we have to go public, it would have to be under Contel Communications because Concepcion Industries, as you're aware, has other uh, business interests as well. And um, so then we would have to sit down with the House and revise this. Yes, if it's under Contel Communications. So that it goes under Contel. Remove remove the word Ashini. Because you are not the franchise holder under Republic Act 3932. Yes, Concepcion. Contel. It's Concepcion, yes, sir. So uh, since Contel is not the franchise holder, we cannot renew the franchise to, of, of Contel because actually Contel, Contel has no franchise. Um, actually, in the um, under Conception Industries, under the original House bill, um, so long as it is a wholly owned subsidiary. Um, yes, yes there, there is no question yes, about okay. the about your your capacity to transfer. Well, that is not being yes. questioned. What we are raising is, you are saying we renew uh, the franchise of Contel, who has actually no franchise; it's only an assignee. The, if it will not cause any commercial difficulty, uh, I was suggesting to the chair, subject to uh, technical uh, uh, valid, valid, uh, validation, that the franchise be directly granted to Contel because we cannot renew a franchise to Contel when Contel is not a franchise holder. Yes, understand, Your Honor. Okay. Yes, thank you. So in essence, what we're considering here is the renewable, uh, the renewal of the franchise that had been extended to Concepcion. Yes. However, we would um, want to transfer that uh, to Contel Communications. Why yes, don't you sit down Contel. with uh, Ed, Ed Cabarios and uh, Gamalil uh, Cord Cordova after the hearing and find out, and then you just let the committee know? Y yes, sir. All right. Let's yes, move sir, on. on. Let's move on to radio yes. television.
maybe we can an, an option would be just to grant a new franchise to Contel and drop the old franchise given to Concepcion because it wouldn't make any operational difference, no? Uh, Your Honor, may I read from the uh, old franchise of Concepcion Industries? Um, this is Republic Act uh, 7401. This was an act um, um, amending the franchise granted to Concepcion Industries. Um, in Section um, 4, it's, it states here, the grantee is hereby given the option to assign or transfer this franchise to a wholly owned subsidiary for purposes of complying with the enabling law that may hereafter be enacted requiring public ownership in accordance with the constitutional mandate of broadening the base of ownership of public utilities. In such a case, the subsidiary shall be entitled to the franchise as if the same was orig originally granted to it. Yes, but see, that means we are renewing the, the Conception, Conception franchise. Conception. And Conception can again assign it to Contel. Mm -hmm. But yes, sir. Uh, it will be awkward will find a way to do it, but it would be awkward if we would be approving a franchise to Contel. Yes, and um, Your Honor, in the uh, current franchise bill now, um, there is a provision here, um, actually, that states, if, if you may, Your Honor, um, <clears throat> in um, what we're asking for approval now is House Bill 4507, um, and in Section 14, it states, uh, regarding sale, lease, transfer, use of rock, or assignment of franchise, um, the grantee shall not sell, lease, transfer, grant the use of rock, or assign this franchise or the rights and privileges acquired there under to any person's firm, company, corporations, or any other commercial or legal entity, <clears throat> or merge with any other corporations or entity, or shall transfer the controlling interest of the grantee whether as whole or in parts, whether simultaneous, simultaneously co or contemporaneously to any person's firm, company, corporations, or entity without the approval of Congress. Um, what, what is different here, Your Honor, is, is that it says, um, without, whether as a whole or in parts, and whether simultaneously or contemporaneously to any person's firm, company, corporations, or entity, without the prior approval of Congress of the Philippines, except when the person or entity to which this franchise is sold, transferred, or assigned is a subsidiary or affiliate of the grantee, and that at least 60% of the outstanding capital stock entitled to vote of such a subsidiary or affiliate is owned and held by Filipino citizens. Um, oh, yes. Please, Mr. Chair, there is no question that the, trans the assignment is valid. Yes. Because that is authorized under the charter, yes. okay, under the franchise. What we are just raising, and there is no question that uh, uh, that uh, we will renew the franchise. The issue is whose franchise are we renewing? The community, I would like to think, has no objection to the renewal of the franchise per se, of Concepcion, and its assignment to Contel because that is so allowed. The only issue is the title of the measure. It says, an act renewing the franchise of Contel Communications. Contel Communications has no franchise. It is Concepcion Industries who has a franchise. So uh, either uh, we give the franchise directly to Contel or we renew the franchise of Concepcion. I mean, yeah. one or the other, because the title does not reflect the real, the real facts. The franchise holder is not Contel. Yes, is that sir. correct? Uh, yes, Your Honor. The franchise holder is Concepcion. Um, Your Honor, except that um, in the, like, in the what, what's this? <clears throat> in the old franchise, it says that it can transfer. There is no question. Uh, okay. Yes, the franchise holder is Concepcion. It has the ability to assign. Um, that assignment is not being questioned. What we are raising is the uh, situation where we are renewing a franchise of an entity who does not have that franchise. It is Concepcion. So it's either we renew Concepcion or we grant a new franchise to Contel. That's all that we're saying. Yes. It cannot be renewal of a franchise 
of Contel because it's non-existent. Uh, Your Honor, just a clarifying point. Um, because in the old franchise of uh, Concepcion Industries, it, it said that it can not as well assign and, and transfer. Um, so sorry. So, yes, Concepcion but, has uh, transferred it to Contel, uh, the franchise to Contel. Already. Okay. So, so you want the franchise in the name of Contel? That's what we're suggesting. Y yes, sir. But we cannot yes, continue with this title, uh, renewing. Contel's franchise, which is not existing. Okay, yes, Your Honor. That's all what they were saying. Right. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Thank you very much. So maybe, okay. uh, Mr. President, uh, we, the title will have to be reworded. An act granting a franchise to Contel Communications. Yes, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, we'll have to coordinate with the House, uh, our House counterpart on that. All right? Okay. Thank you very much, Your Honors. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, uh, let's go on to Radio Mindanao Network. Now, would you like to make a presentation, Eric? Good morning, Your Honors. Uh, good morning, Chairman and uh, Senate President, you're present. Radio Mindanao Network has been in operation since 1952. Uh, this year, we celebrated our 63rd year in radio broadcasting, Your Honors. Uh, this is going to be our second extension from the original franchise in granted in 1952. So we're requesting the Senate to approve. The House bill already has been approved, and uh, I see at the Senate, Your Honors. Uh, radio Mindanao Network has 40 radio stations nationwide, about 25 AM, 15 FM. We have affiliates also all over the country. Uh, we total about, including affiliates, about 65 radio stations, Your Honor. And we continue to serve the public as it chose to be. And we try our very best to comply with all the rules and regulations of the NTC. Also here present, Your Honor. That is all. All right. Um, and interactive broadcast media, who, who speaks for interactive? Good morning, Mr. Chair. Um, you were your brothers. Yes. yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. Right. Two brothers having two franchises. There are, we are three brothers, Your Honor. Three. So we we'll lack <laughs> a third one, Your Honor. Uh, how many? <laughs> Not yet, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, the, uh, we are requesting, Your Honors, that uh, a franchise, the renewal of the franchise of Interactive be granted because there's a change in ownership. Um, this, uh, this company was granted a franchise in 1996 and it's going to expire in 2021 but we're requesting that a franchise already be granted now still with uh, the same name because there's a change of ownership Mr. Chair. there's a change of ownership you said what was your last sentence there's a change in ownership uh, from the change? original franchise franchise holder Mr. Chair there's a change in ownership is that what you said? Yes. From whom to whom? Your Honors, good morning. There's a change of controlling interest in the franchisor. In the franchise. Did you submit that in your report? Yes, sir. Who is Yes, the, Your Honors. What was the change? Give us the nature of the change because we do... As a matter of course, we ask that kung papalit yung, yung, yung mayari, notice sent to, to Congress. Uh, there are gray areas there uh, where... Uh, Your uh, Honors, the, the franchisee is Interactive Broadcast Media Inc. And... Um, the, the registered owners... Do I have to mention, Your Honors, the names of the registered owners? Yes, please. That, that's a matter of public record. Mm -hmm. Can we start, Your Honors, with the names of the incorporators? Go ahead. Um, Irineo M. Palma, 10%. Rosenda B. Palma, 10%. Slowly, a Angel A. Romero Jr., 10%. Maria Leonora P. Romero, 10%. Heriberto Y. Santos, 10%. Mar 
Marian P. Santos, 10%. Rene V. Palma, 10%. Tina M. Palma, 10%. Danilo V. Palma, 10%. And Anne Marie M. Palma, 10%. Where's Kanoy? That's Where's the original registered stockholder. Oh, this was the original, yes. All yes, right. and... Um, we would like to seek the approval of the change of the controlling interest of IBMI. Okay. That's why we're here, and we will, would like also take this opportunity to renew the or extend the life of the franchise. When was the ownership transferred? Sir, it was transferred on <laughs> August 5, 2014. Last year. Yes, Your Honor, but the certificate authorizing registration is still has not yet been released by the BIR, and um, this change of controlling interest of Interactive Broadcast Media Inc. has also been disclosed at the lower house. Mm -hmm. And it would like would to your would the franchise of uh, Interactive Broadcast Media? Require concurrence of Congress before controlling interest can be transferred? Yes, Your Honor. And uh, you are seeking that uh, uh, consent now? Yes, Your Honor. We're Where seeking. Are you so <laughs> reluctant to? <laughs> no, so Your Honor. We're seeking the approval of the Congress for the change of the controlling interest pursuant to the provisions of the original franchise, okay. Your Honor. All right, what would we do? owners look like? I hope they don't look like Butch. <laughs> so the new set of stockholders will be as follows. E.D. Canoy, Prime Holdings, Inc., 100%. Filipino, sir. Your Honor. Why do you need two radios <laughs> franchise? You already have one. Your Honors, there are certain areas where we feel that additional service might be necessary and under the existing rules and regulation, a network uh, under the NTC rules, a network can only own one AM, one FM in a uh, given area, Your Honor, and one television I station. See. I see. So how many, restriction. how many radio stations does Interactive uh, currently operate? Cu currently operates two radio stations, one in Manila AM, DWWW, oh. and one in the Gupan and FM station that's being transferred already, you know. Uh, this is the WHT in the Gupan City, an FM station, Your Honor. Okay, two radio stations. Very good. Uh, any questions? Uh, yes. Is the c consent of Congress that you are trying to secure incorporated in these uh, proposed uh, measures? Yes, Your Honor. Is it there? Or can you check? If a partic that particular consent being granted is in the, in the proposed bill or in the proposed law. Can you check? Yes, Eric. Uh, yes, we'll check. Yes. Are there, we'll look up in the Secretariat, Your Honor. Um, hearing suspended.
hearing resumed, we will be making proposals so that the two specific items, one, which is the extension of the existing franchise, the renewal, and two, the specific approval by Congress of a change in ownership. So we want to make it clear that it's written into the franchise. All right? Thank you very much, Your Honors. Thank you. Welcome. Um, then let's move on to the next uh, applicant, and that would be Leo Broadcasting. Good morning, Your Honors. Yeah, you have a good reason why we should re uh, renew this? Yes, uh, Your Honor. <laughs> yeah, DWIC, yeah, and incidentally, I'm privileged to, yeah, to impart to the body, to the committee, a few significant uh, background of the station. Yeah, even before this was acquired uh, by Ambassador Antonio Cabangon Chua, yeah, and the Chairman Emeritus of ALC Group of Companies. Uh, DWIC is part of the Philippine history way back in the 1949. Yeah, all uh, turn up events uh, it has been uh, uh, broadcasted by the, by the station, by uh, DWIC. Uh, to name few uh, devastating uh, earthquake in central Luzon in 1990, the uh, eruption of uh, Mount Pinatubo, series of uh, uh, earthquake, and uh, until in 1991, this was acquired by uh, Ambassador Antonio Cabangon Chua, and uh, through the enhanced and improved uh, programming, we were able to get uh, uh, recognitions from very prestigious uh, award-giving bodies uh, like Rotary Club of Manila, journalism awards like uh, uh, being the outstanding radio station, uh, recognition from CMMA, Catholic Mass Media Awards, and uh, Golden Dub Awards of KBP. Uh, now uh, we are into the renewal uh, of the uh, yeah, franchise of the, uh, the station, uh, Your Honors. Did uh, Alu obtain the approval of Congress on the change of ownership when it yes, happened? Uh, yes, yeah, okay. Your Honor. So that's on, on record somewhere? Yes. How many stations is Alu? Yeah, 1 a.m. station in uh, Manila and uh, 9 FM stations. All in Manila? Uh, no, outside uh, Manila, Your Honors, in the provinces. Any questions, Frank? No questions, Mr. Chairman. No, I have no questions, Mr. Chairman. Very good. Um, we consider, seriously consider your franchise. Thank you, Your Honours. Right, now let's go to Christian Era and Eagle Broadcasting. Who will speak for Christian Era? You, the lower in Kayo, no? You're both uh, Iglesia. Bakit dalawa? Okay, who would, who would like to speak for uh, uh, Christian Era? Kinong spokesperson on Christian Era? Mr. San Victores? Good morning, Your Honors. Good morning. Uh, on behalf of our President and CEO, Mr. Angelo Manalo, we would like to thank first all of you for giving us this opportunity to present to you what SEBC is, or the Christian Era Broadcasting Service International Incorporated. SEBC, as uh, uh, we all know, is a non-stock and non-profit uh, organization, and it, it serves as the official broadcast arm of uh, the Iglesia Ni Cristo or Church of Christ 
for presenting uh, family-oriented shows, values-loaded programs, our social uh, concerns and involvement, as well as in promoting uh, Filipino culture and values. As of now, uh, SEBC, or the Christian Era Broadcasting Service International Incorporated, as of now, it maintains three media outlets, namely uh, INC TV or the Iglesia Ni Cristo Television, the uh, INC Radio or the Iglesia Ni Cristo Radio, as well as the, and the third one is the uh, incmedia.org, which is the official website of uh, uh, the SEBC or the Christian Era. Uh, we operate from 4 in the morning up to 12 midnight. Uh, we have uh, through uh, um, 30,000 watt output, which, uh, it's, which it is translated into, we cover the uh, entire Metro Manila as well as the nearby provinces. And as of now, we have more than uh, 500 uh, uh, cable uh, the uh, the uh, our programs are being aired in the different. Uh, Excuse uh, me. You have more than 500. What? We have uh, our programs are being aired in the different uh, in fi in more than 500 cable companies, or to be exact, 552 cable companies uh, all over the Philippines, and we now have eight relay stations uh, scattered in the different parts of uh, Luzon, Visayas, and uh, Mindanao. Now, what's the difference between Christian Era and Eagle Broadcasting? Christian Era Broadcasting Service Incor International Incorporated is the uh, uh, official broadcast arm, as I have mentioned a while back, sir, uh, for presenting the uh, uh, teachings of the Bible upheld by the Iglesia Ni Cristo, as well as our social concerns and involvement um, it is a non-stock and non-profit uh, broadcasting corporation, sir. In short, it is not commercial, Paul. You still haven't told me the story, but, uh, the difference between Christian Era and Eagle Broadcasting. What is the difference? The operations? May, may I explain, Paul? Uh, SEBC is the religious uh, broadcast station for the Iglesia Ni Cristo, whereas the Eagle Broadcasting Corporation is the commercial uh, station. I see. So one is non-profit and the yes. other is profit. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, how many TV stations does Christian Era have? Just one or two? We have one TV station, which is uh, the INC TV or Iglesia Ni Cristo Television, you have sir, a, a channel two, 49. Two or three channels, no? Uh, in the different cable cable uh, operators, Paul, we have different channel assignments, Paul, but we only have one TV station, Paul. And Eagle is radio. That's commercial. That's commercial, Paul. The Eagle Broadcasting uh, Corporation for the EBC. Do you have a television also for Eagle? Uh, no? Probably we may ask, po, sir, the uh, representatives of the EBC, po. We represent only uh, Christian Era Broadcasting Service, po, sir. Who would like to answer the question? Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning. I am the Corporate Secretary of Eagle Broadcasting Corporation. We have Net25 as our TV portal. We also have Pinas FM, our uh, FM radio station, and we have uh, six uh, AM radio stations, and we also have Eagle You know, I, I, I have to ask you to forgive me. I cannot understand you. Would you like to bring the mic closer and speak a little more slowly? Thanks, sir. Sorry, sir. Uh, we have one TV station for uh, Eagle Broadcasting Corporation. It is Net25. All right, that's commercial. Uh, yes, sir. It okay, is. then how many radios? We have one FM station. It is called DWDM 95.5 Pinas FM. DWDM. Yes. Yes, sir. AM. AM, we have six, sir. Six AM. <clears throat> and your your six are spread throughout the zone. Yes, or sir. Do you have we, any in the Visayas and Mindanao? We also have, sir. Um, one is here in Metro Manila, uh, DCEC. We also have one in Lucena. We also have one in uh, Dagupan, Cebu, Davao. Does Christian Era have any radio stations? Yes, Your Honor. We have the uh, INC radio or Iglesia Ni Cristo radio. We only have one radio station. Po. AM, no? Yes, po, AM. Manila? Yes, sir. All right. 
and both are renewals, extensions? Yes, Your Honor. Very well. Um, I think that's all the questions that I wish to ask this morning. Uh, Mr. Senate President, have you any other questions? No, no question on, on, Chris, on uh, Eagle Broadcasting and Christian, Christian Era Europe. Broadcasting Service International Incorporated. So the concept is Christian, I mean, uh, Christian Era, Christian Era Broadcasting caters yes, to principally uh, to the religious aspect of Iglesia Ni Cristo. Exactly, sir. It is a the official religious station of the Iglesia Ni Cristo, sir. Okay. And the other one is commercial. Exactly, sir. Uh, okay, we have no more questions. Just uh, if we can go back, uh, Mr. Chairman, just two items on the franchise of, with your permission, of uh, uh, interactive uh, road, interactive road. Just two two items, Mr. President, Mr. Chairman. May we suggest if this would, uh, if this would pass technical uh, uh, scrutiny. Uh, on line 8 of the House bill, between the word ink and to, uh, referring to uh, the uh, recognition of the transfer yes, of, uh, uh, to Ed Canoy Prime Holdings, we insert the phrase, quote, which transfer is hereby ratified? Okay. Uh, which transfer is hereby ratified? Okay? Yeah. So that... Yes, we agree, Your Honor. Thank you very much for the suggestion, Your Honor. The other issue that is okay with the chair. Uh, okay? Yeah. The Here other issue is on the effectivity. Yeah. I noticed that you mentioned earlier that your present franchise will still expire in five years' time. Five years, uh, 2021, Your Honor. It was granted in 1996. Uh -huh. But we had to apply earlier precisely be to uh, address that issue in the franchise provision that any chains of majority or controlling interest of the franchise grantee, uh, it should be subject to the approval of Congress, Your Honor. So what would happen once we approve this bill and presently the measure says, the proposed bill says, it will take effect 15 days after its publication in the official gazette or newspaper of general uh, application. Assuming that it, it takes effect 15 days, what happens to the present franchise? Is it terminated? What, what, or you have two franchises for five years? Um, I, I, I guess the way it's uh, presented, it uh, is supposed to be terminated. But uh, should uh, the Congress uh, allow us, uh, if the, uh, the extension will start upon the termination of the original length of the franchise, Your Honor. In other words, we set the effectivity in, yes. uh, uh, upon the expiration of, of the original franchise. Of the original franchise. Yes. We, we specify that. Uh, why don't we specify the date, though? Yes. Uh, well, that, that one we submit to, uh, to the committee as a matter that... We agree with that, Mr. President. Uh, in past... Uh, franchise renewals, we just tack it on to the original, say, 25-year uh, uh, franchise period. Uh, many of these franchises have to be renewed earlier because of the signing of long-term contracts. They've got loans, etc., and uh, nobody will give you a three-year loan if your franchise expires in one year. So we can understand the commercial reasons, therefore. So. So we can make the we have no objections. Yeah. That, yeah. We can make the uh, law effective after the expiration of your existing franchise. The existing franchise. Thank you very much, Your Honor. Thank you so much. Thank you. And uh, does anybody want to add anything? Hindi dumating yung kano yung ERC. I are you representing ERC, Miss Grace Santos? Yes. Have you any? comments on the uh, two franchises we have up here, Mactan Electric and uh, Tardlock Electric. Yes. Good morning, uh, Your Honors. I am Attorney Grace Lu Santos from the Office of the General Counsel, and I am here in behalf of our chairperson, um, Jose Vicente Sal Salazar. Um, with regard to the uh, 
renewal of the franchises of both TEI and Mactan Electric uh, Company. Um, we were able to unearth um, some cases which have not been resolved yet um, by the Energy Regulatory Commission with regard to the non-compliances or um, charges for violation of Mactan Electric Company and uh, TEI. And um, before we do present um, these before the, the Senate, Your Honor, we'd like to confer first with um, both companies in order for us to ensure that the data that we have are updated. Otherwise, we will be presenting them, Your Honor, to the Senate. Just do you so have problems with both Mactan Electric and Tarlac or only Mactan Electric? Uh, for Mactan Electric, we have um, several um, violations in our record which have not been resolved yet. And with TEI, we have one on our record. And we'd really like to take it up with them first just so we can verify from their records whether or not um, they have already uh, submitted their compliances. All right. So what the committee is going to do is it shall hold in abeyance their uh, application until you would have cleared that with the committee. And, Thank um, you, Your Honors. Douglas, please please clear, clear the top. Right now, give us a copy of uh, what you consider violations that have not been addressed. Yes, Your Honors. Addressed. All Thank right? you. Thank you. Mr. Chair, can we have a period within which this must be resolved? Because otherwise, uh, the franchise will be hanging uh, if it is not resolved. Uh, what would be a reasonable time for you to resolve this? Your Honor, may we request for um, an adequate time? It really depends also on the availability of both companies to confer with uh, the particular service involved with the supposed violations. I have, I have a list. I can provide you um, a copy of that. So you can take it up directly with the service of the Energy Regulatory Commission handling that case. So, 15 days or? Uh, Your Honor, if I may. Yes, please. Uh, during our uh, application for the franchise, we have uh, actually asked a certificate from the uh, Energy Regulatory Commission with regards to uh, our application as clearance. Uh, and we were given a certificate. Uh, but uh, if uh, there are uh, pending issues uh, that uh, uh, that the uh, good uh, representative from ERC might raise, we will be more than willing to, uh, to find that out. Uh, but uh, again, uh, as part of the requirement uh, for this application, uh, we have been uh, we, ha we have attached the uh, certificate of clearance from ERC. Po. All right. So right after this, why don't the two of you talk already? So that uh, you can let the committee know by what date uh, you should be able to clear things up because we do want a letter of clearance from the regulator before we consider the uh, franchise, uh, the extension of the franchise of uh, Mactan Electric. Yes, Your Honor. Clear. All right. Any other comments? Nothing from NTC? Um, no, no, no other items, Your Honor. Why are, are our Wi-Fi so slow? <laughs> yeah, no, we are faster than <laughs> Afghanistan. <laughs> yes, that's on record. That's a good question, Mr. Chairman. Uh, why um, is it so slow? Why is it only faster than Afghanistan? Thank you, uh, Your Honors, um, Honorable Senate President, Honorable Chairman of the committee. Uh, actually, Paul, we uh, attended the hearing here also. With uh, it was chaired by Senator Bamakino. Mm. And um, it was uh, there were some there are other guests present. Uh, Neda was also here, the OST, ICTO, and the NTC, and other uh, groups representing the civil society. Actually, Your Honor, um, one of the reasons why um, uh, that we have to do is uh, in other countries, po, um, the government is putting in uh, infrastructure. Um, ano po, we can submit that to, to the committee. The government is putting in infrastructure, and um, because uh, in other areas, sometimes the telcos cannot cannot go there because of, um, uh, of course, they have um, 
um, yung pong sa kanilang shareholders, meron po silang pananagutan. So what they do uh, in other countries, the government puts in infrastructure to help the private sector uh, para po bumilis po yung Wi-Fi and uh, yun pong uh, internet. So uh, one of the suggestions at that time during the hearing was for uh, uh, making it part of the medium-term development plan. Yun pong gagawin po na yun. So there would be an interagency committee with the DOST, NEDA, and other government offices that will be that will be um, um, uh, put together. What about requiring that a certain percentage of the net income of these internet operators be devoted for capital outlay? Actually, uh, we we're also uh, pr we also proposed that put to the committee. Uh, that's called the Universal Access Fund. Po. That's also being done in other countries, but it has to be through a law, sir. Mm. Um, a certain percentage of their income is. Uh, put together for infrastructure po, uh, through the universal access system. Would the NTC like to draft such a law? Uh, we will, Your Honor. We will do that. Po. In other countries, uh, instead of uh, saying you got us telling the uh, operator or the uh, service provider that they have to set aside a certain amount of money, they do it better. They already set targets. Yes, yeah, so by <laughs> by uh, two two thousand eighteen, we have to be have an average of five megabits per second. By two thousand twenty two, we must have ten megabits per second. sila. If they violate that, they get fined. Yeah. Pero if you ask them just to set aside money, they they will find excuses. <laughs> What, what, what's your reaction to the suggestion of uh, Senator Osmeña? Um, we will do that, Your Honor, and uh, coordinate with the Senate on that. Yes. You will do that? Ang bilis mo naman. Hindi ko naniniwala that you can do. Huh? Well, huh? we would like to uh, hear, hear from you, say, within two weeks, uh, Mr. Cordova, because you're... Um, let's see. Your budget is up for... To, uh, 2016. No, I, I mean this in a good way. Yeah, if if you need additional, we will certainly work. Uh, we did we did that last year, and it, and uh, we want to make sure that we're not forcing you to do something and not give you the wherewithal to accomplish that something, diba In any case, any more reactions? Uh, those. There being none, thank you, Mr. Senate President. Uh, this hearing is adjourned.